Ms. Hello, and again, thank you for joining us for today's session uh, brought to you by ClearCalls and IBM. Today's uh, session is entitled uh, Mastering Customer Experience for the Telecom Industry. My name is Kevin Miller. I'm the uh, VP of Marketing and Sales here at ClearCalls, and it's very much my pleasure to speak with everybody today. So real quick, um, just in terms of what we're going to cover off on, uh, just some introductions, some house cleaning items that we've kind of already went through. Uh, we do have some folks, Burton Boucher is going to be joining us today from IBM to get into some of the product side of today's discussion. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit about <clears throat> uh, some of the importance around customer experience in the telecommunication industry, why this matters so much, uh, what's changed in the nature of the telecom industry uh, that's driving uh, the interest around customer experience and how companies can leverage customer experience technology uh, to drive real results and when I say real uh, what we typically mean is uh, hard numeric values like uh, additional revenue, uh, reduction in churn rate of customers, things along those lines. Uh, and then some practical use cases around how customer experience technology, in this case we're going to be talking specifically about a technology uh, within IBM uh, known as Tea Leaf. Um, how folks can use this to gain a competitive advantage in what is otherwise uh, a commodity-based uh, industry. So a little bit about uh, clear goals. I'm sure everybody on the call is familiar with IBM. Uh, there's probably a few people on the planet who are not. Uh, but if this is the first time you're ever interacting with clear goals, we want to give you a sense of who we are uh, in relation to the IBM ecosystem. So first and foremost, uh, we are a global technical marketing services firm. And basically what that means is um, we do implementation, outsourcing, staffing, <clears throat> um, planning, a strategy around IBM's entire suite of what we call their, their Watson marketing or their marketing technology. And inside of that uh, is a tool known as Tea Leaf, which falls in the customer experience technology. Uh, and that is a technology that ClearGoals is very much um, a part of in our partnership with IBM. We were founded originally in 2007, predominantly. Uh, came over with ex-Unica employees. Unica is a tool that IBM had purchased many years ago, uh, which was a large enterprise marketing management platform known as Unica. Uh, today we operate from our offices in New York, Montreal, Philadelphia, and Atlanta, and are 100% focused on the IBM marketing technology stack, including all of the CX customer experience technologies and the analytics that go with that. Uh, we're proud to boast the largest pool of IBM marketing consultants in North America today, and that's going to include uh, the tools like IBM Campaign, uh, IBM Marketing Cloud uh, and IBM uh, Tea Leaf. So that's a little bit about us. Um, in terms of the company itself, this will come with a copy of the PDF that you'll get. Uh, it goes into a little bit more detail, but a couple things that are that are important to note uh, on this: um, the team uh, here at Clear Goals that works closely with IBM. It's a team of 50 plus or more employees uh, with over 150 uh, work years combined in the Martech space. And again, that's going to also include the data science portion, the customer experience portion, uh, etc. And we're a multinational team, so we deal with companies from the Pacific Rim through North America, uh, through Western and Eastern Europe. So in terms of customer experience <clears throat> in the telecommunications sector, so IBM had put out uh, a really good uh, report uh, not too long ago that really detailed um, you know, what, what customer experience meant in the telecommunication industry, why it was important, uh, what some of the perceptions from the telecommunication industry were both on the, on the company side and then they also pulled the customer side of it. Uh, and there was a couple of interesting statistics that came out of it. Uh, number one, 89% of the companies believe that customer experience is going to be one of the primary basis for competitive success uh, by the year 2016. And as we wrap up 2016, um, you know, this, this has definitely come true. Uh, companies really are focusing heavily um, in, in an age when uh, phones are phones, um, you know, networks are networks, etc. The competitive advantage is really about the experience that you provide to the customer. 83% uh, of the telco CEOs identify customer insight as one of the most critical investments they can make in, in their organization. And 50% of consumers are very satisfied uh, with their service provider. So obviously there's a lot of room for improvement on the customer side in terms of their perception of the experience that's being delivered uh, by the telcos. So what are the trends that we're seeing? 82% of consumers uh, believe uh, that having issues resolved quickly 
is one of the top criteria for superior customer experience. So understanding uh, the problems and responding to those problems in a very timely fashion uh, can really have an impact on a person's perception of doing business with you. 56% uh, of telecom customers use self-service options to choose best plan. 77% use self-service to pay their bills uh, or recharge accounts. You know, I cannot recall the last check that I've written to any of my telco cable providers, etc. Um, everything uh, is done online and my expectation is that there's a very high-value, high seamless and fast experience on the web and, and I'm probably very common, uh, as all of you are, amongst consumers of telco and their related services. 51% of U.S. consumers switch service providers uh, due to poor customer experience, okay? And that's really a telling uh, metric, poor customer experience. People don't switch because of call drops. People don't switch because, uh, you know, there, there's a speed issue for a brief period of time. It's that kind of you, you see it in the commercials now where even there's commercials out there saying, you know, everybody's within 1% of each other. Um, so really, uh, what's going to net the customers? And that's going to be the overall experience that's delivered to them. And that all sounds good. That's great. And, and we're really going to get into more of the technical uh, aspects of what customer experience means. Um, but real quick, by 2016, and this was part of the report as well, customer experience will be the primary differentiator. So you have 69% of companies uh, believe wholeheartedly that they offer a superior online experience. And then on the other side of that, you have 51% of customers who left a company that failed them um, and blamed their exit on a bad online experience. Okay, This was not the uh, report that IBM put out. This was a Gartner Customer Experience Emerges report uh, from 2015 that was also done in conjunction with uh, e-consultancy. So there's a pretty big gap. Uh, the gap between the perception of the vendor and the, and the perception of the con consumer. And I think we'd all agree that the perception of the consumer is probably the one that we really need to key in on. Um, why does this gap exist? First and foremost, the tools that are used to analyze customer experience have historically been extremely fragmented. Uh, they operate in different silos and they don't communicate with each other. That's a common technology problem in a lot of different categories of technology. And customer experience, you know, we're still kind of at that stage uh, where this uh, discipline is evolving very quickly. Uh, the technologies that are available are getting better uh, and faster uh, and more intuitive. Um, with AI associated with them, with machine learning. Um, but again, the data is oftentimes not held in a universal uh, data store. So it can be difficult to see the trends when you only have partial information. Uh, linking interactions across channels is often challenging. Uh, and when we think of multi-channel or omni-channel interactions, whether it's on mobile devices, whether it's on uh, apps, whether it's on the web, uh, different websites, etc. Those interactions uh, should not be occurring in a funnel from a data harvesting standpoint. The data all needs to ultimately come into one place. And the organizations inside of, of these uh, inside of these big companies oftentimes are siloed as well. Um, maybe it's because of acquisition or the way uh, one particular division has grown. There's a lack of understanding of what customer experience really is all about. Um, and there's oftentimes uh, lack of investment in customer experience because companies don't understand how to link a return on investment with quote unquote customer uh, experience initiatives. So that that in and of itself has been a big impetus to companies truly implementing a customer experience initiative from a technology point of view is really not being able to go into uh, the C-suite in an organization and help them understand how you measure customer experience to begin with. Okay. So a few things to think about there. So you know, when you're thinking about a customer experience initiative, uh, first and foremost, what are you trying to accomplish? Number one, you should be trying to deliver compelling marketing, shopping, and service experience. And you know, notice those are three things which you may not at least initially consider um, around telco, but in essence, that's what you're doing. You know, when people are on a website, uh, even if they're just on there to pay their bill or, or do a service thing, it's still an opportunity uh, for cross-sell, upsell. And we can't lose sight of that. So we have to have information about what's going on in those experiences uh, to personalize a person's experience when they do come in. Again, uh, every opportunity to cross-sell and upsell should be taken advantage of on the web.
you need to understand your customers, engage them uh, in some kind of personalized experience, deliver on any every interaction so they become your advocates, uh, using technology solutions that put your customers at the heart of your marketing, sales, and service operation. Uh, the things that you hopefully will be able to accomplish uh, would be the ability to improve customer engagement, create more personal digital experiences across web, mobile, and social. Uh, consistent brand experience. Uh, this is where customers can research, buy, track, receive, return, uh, whatever, uh, whenever they want, uh, whenever they choose, and however they choose through the web experience. Uh, increase revenue uh, by delivering targeted, personalized, highly effective campaigns and promotions, uh, relevant promotions based on the services they're consuming. Um, you know, I had a great experience not long ago. I like to relate these personal experiences. I got a phone call from my provider. Uh, and I would rarely pick the phone call up, um, but in this case I did, and it was a proactive call um, that I received, and it, basically it was them letting me know that they had a new plan available that was actually cheaper, um, but then they also encouraged me to add some additional services for an additional line that I had that was being neglected. So my core service ended up, uh, the cost of it ended up going down for me. It was a better plan, uh, but then I actually added it some additional services as well, um, and I'm actually spending a little bit more uh, than I was before, um, but I found value in that because I was able to add some services that I had uh, somewhere else and wrap everything into one. So that kind of proactive outreach uh, based on their knowledge of me um, was very well, well received, and I think uh, companies need to strive for that. And in terms of churn, Okay, this is another big issue. Understand and proactively identify digital struggles, web service and mobile. This is one of the concepts you're going to see today um, as we get into this actual technology around tea leaf is understanding when people are struggling um, with your service on the web uh, or through mobile devices. Um, it combines, the, these struggles are going to, identification are going to combine customer behavior and experience analytics um, to allow targeting of subscribers based on propensity to churn score, okay, so we can kind of group people together. It's almost like, you know, if we think about the disciplines that is used in, in marketing, we think about, you know, propensity to buy. Um, so it's a similar type of thing, and you're identifying someone's propensity to buy something. What you're doing is you're really kind of looking at their behavior, demographics, their history, uh, and you're wrapping that into a score, uh, and you're try attempting to predict what they're going to buy. The same exact concepts uh, apply on managing churn. It's accumulating data around behaviors more often than not, uh, and trying to predict if that behavior means that they're going to churn. So there's some tried and true methodologies that have been used in marketing for years that we're now applying uh, to the service side of the business, uh, and it's having uh, fantastic results, as you'll see when we get into some of these case studies. So, you've heard the term tea leaf a couple of times, and this is what we're going to talk about when we get into the product section. Um, it's an interesting product, very, very interesting product, and it really captures qualitative details of digital interactions. I think that's kind of the unique uh, thing about this, qualitative, not just quantitative. It gives visibility uh, and actionable insights and answers organizations um, <clears throat> in ways that it hasn't been done before. It has things like the ability to visualize and replay someone's experience on your website. So not just you went from this page to this page to this page, we're able to kind of identify and as we're even talking to somebody maybe in a service situation, see exactly where their struggle on the site occurred. There's customer experience analytics in there to help understand these behaviors and understand these struggles and even proactively predict others who may have these struggles uh, or find trends to figure out are the struggles caused by some common thing, whether it's an error in the website or whether it's a, a technical error with a certain browser, etc. So there's some very unique things that, that they're doing, um, which we haven't seen on the market before, which are, which are truly having an impact. Um, there's a value proposition behind this. Number one, it allows you to analyze customer behavior data. This uncovers trends in what we call the contextual insights. Um, it's prescriptive in that it allows you to replay to significantly reduce customer dispute investigations. If somebody's on the phone with you and saying, I swear I did this and did this and did this online, and if you're able to go in there and actually replay that session and see exactly what they did, you may be able to uh, correct what was done uh, and avoid a he said, she said situation on a service call. Uh, assess the mobile customer experience of mobile web, uh, native apps, 
hybrid applications. There's so much going on right now. I have another great experience. There was a new cool service that was offered uh, to me um, where I could access my um, cable and watch uh, movies or TV uh, in airports. And when I went to try and sign up for it, it took me 30 minutes, and I was you know, downloaded the app on my phone, wasn't able to get signed in properly, wasn't able to get in and see the videos properly before my uh, flight had started, so I abandoned it. And I ended up not going forward with the service. So um, Tea Leaf would be something that would be able to identify exactly where I was struggling. I know exactly where I was struggling, but uh, the company probably wouldn't know that unless they had this technology uh, installed on the application. Uh, impact analysis. Uh, this allows us to prioritize and reduce time of issue identification and resolution, uh, decreasing the overall uh, production support costs. So one of the things that we talked about a little bit earlier was that part of the reasons companies don't have a true quote unquote customer experience initiative, which includes um, business process reengineering, technology, and the training and the implementation and all, all the budget dollars that go along with that, is because they haven't been able to quantify what they consider to be a customer experience initiative. So um, these type of solutions, like Tea Leaf, really do allow you to quantify that, and we'll, we'll get into that, and, and, and it'll be, I think, an interesting thing to ponder. Um, so with that, let's go through a couple of use cases that we talked about, um, <clears throat> and I think this will help crystallize a couple of things. So there's a couple of different examples here. You know, this one was with, and we have to obviously scrub the names out for legal purposes, but this is one of the leading telecommunication companies in the United States. Um, what they used it to improve their overall web uh, and mobile design. The problem that they had uh, was that they had undergone a substantial redesign of their desktop and mobile websites, and they wanted to improve their overall conversion rates. So what they did was there's a module inside of Tea Leaf called CX Mobile, um, and it's basically uh, installed and hel helps them make design decisions based on a mobile user's characteristics. Uh, what it does, it, it identifies and analyzes and addresses issues um, as part of the overall redesign of the site. Uh, they address an issue with adding a family plan, uh, which would have resulted in a loss of a million dollars during the beta trials alone. So they were able to uncover a struggle during the redesign and rollout process before this ever hit the general public, uh, and they did an analysis of it, and had they gone forward the way it had been designed, and what they would have expected of abandonment <clears throat> um, would have been essentially a $1 million uh, loss. So they were able to use uh, the tea leaf solution to eliminate that uh, before it ever hit the market, which is kind of a unique proactive approach. Okay, so the next one is digital television provider. Uh, this is a leading digital television provider uh, in the United States. Uh, the problems that they were having was the marketing team had noticed there were high abandonment rates on the site, and they were trending upwards, but they had no idea uh, why. So they did an installation of Tea Leaf, uh, and they put that in place, and the company was able to discover that an endless loop had occurred in the new subscriber. Uh, process. And once a new subscriber entered their payment information, they basically came up to the last step before there was an order completion uh, where they're supposed to enter a date for it was the actual equipment delivery. Uh, but when new subscribers wouldn't put the date in, uh, they ended up getting stuck in this loop. And on average, three sessions per day were caught in what they call this no man's land. So typically at this step in the process, the conversion rate would have been 88%. Therefore, the company was able to calculate it was essentially losing two new customers a day because of this endless loop, uh, which would costing them $600 uh, per day. So identifying this with Tea Leaf and then immediately fixing it, it ended up generating an additional $220,000 $220, per year uh, in revenue. Another example would be wireless carrier, one of the leading wireless carriers in the US. Um, they had a problem uh, in identifying underperforming areas of the site their website and insight into the corrective steps necessary to resolve them. So what they did was they put tea leaf on uh, the site and they were able to drill down into abandoned user sessions and found out that more than 225 equipment buyers per day uh, were unable to complete their purchase because there was a bunch of glitches in the shipping address page. Uh, one particular glitch resulted when users entered a zip code uh, and the site was supposed to automatically match city state, uh, but because the database um, used to conduct the match had been corrupted. Most were not valid and were getting an error message. Another glitch occurred, you know, good example, uh, when current customers were trying to buy and ship their purchase to address other than the company they had on file. 
uh, the application was built so that if the uh, credit card address and the shipping address didn't match, then the purchase was considered a fraud and it wouldn't complete. So, you know, the impact of this um, was obviously pretty high. The tea leaf was able to kind of empower the company, resolve the obstacles, increase the conversions, and, and get more than $600,000 per year um, by eliminating those lost sales, uh, just from technical stuff that they would not have found uh, without this technology on there in the first place. And before we trans over, transition over and actually look at what this looks like from a product standpoint, one more example, there's a uh, U.S. cellular service provider. Uh, was able to gain some visibility into their contact center and improve customer <laughs> satisfaction. Um, <clears throat> the company basically uh, wanted to ensure the compliance to customer service procedures by doing these weekly audits of the call center. In doing so, they were able to find um, over 1,300 customer order packages per week were being returned because of an agent error. Uh, this was calculated basically into an $800,000 per year loss. So the company used Tea Leaf, basically what they did was they recorded the sessions on their agent portal uh, and that provided them with the visibility of the root cause of the problem and they were able to replay these sessions. Uh, they saw how the agents were entering addresses and discovered that offshore agents did not know how to properly enter a U.S. address, uh, pinpointing a valuable training opportunity. So the benefit, company discovered uh, an opportunity to better train their offshore agents and in turn uh, were able to reduce the occurrence of uh, an incorrect address by 50%. And this ended up saving over four hundred thousand uh, dollars per year. So there's a lot of use cases around hard metrics on ROI uh, that come with this type of technology, and uh, it's it's an interesting thing to to share with executives if they're questioning how you can quantify a customer experience project. So with that, um, there's a couple of quick examples. I think it'd be a good point to transition to Burton Boucher is going to be joining us. Burton, if you want to do a quick audio check, say hello. Hello. Great, uh, you're coming through loud and clear. So, Burton, I'll let you do an introduction. Uh, tell folks who you are and uh, what your role is at IBM. And then, as I'm passing over control, you can kind of pick us up and bring us through your portion uh, of the presentation. Great, thank you, Kevin. Yes, my name is uh, Burton Boucher. Um, I'm a um, uh, channel solution specialist uh, with IBM. I support business partners in North America across customer engagement. So part of customer engagement is uh, obviously in the customer analytics uh, area of which um, the tea leaf uh, customer uh, experience analytics is a component. So uh, the reason why I'm on this call is to uh, facilitate the uh, demonstration and uh, answer any technical questions. So with that, I'm, uh, what we're looking at, um, you know, we're starting to look into, um, this is a view of um, Tea Leaf, customer experience on cloud. I'm currently in the analytics section. Uh, we see that there's a checkout funnel report on the left-hand side, uh, and we're going to actually start looking at into that, right? So we can see that we're looking at, for example, uh, sessions are, are, you know, the, the total number of sessions is our first uh, um, you know, a point starting the checkout is our next one. We see some drop off there. Uh, filling out the ship and bill, uh, we have a little bit of drop, additional drop off there. And then finally, those that, that complete. So normally, this is a kind of report that you might see with, uh, you, know, uh, you know, just strictly with web analytics, right? What Tea Leaf allows you to do is to drill in to find out why that's occurring. Right? I see that's occurring. I see my drop off. It may look good. It may, you know, may look good to you. It may, you know, it may not. Uh, this is kind of demonstration data, but the key is we can take your uh, funnel data and be able to drill down into that to find out um, and answer the and answer the question: Why are they dropping off? So let's jump right into this report here. So we'll see that it covers a you know certain number of dates. I can uh, set the dates. I can change uh, you know different segments and look for visitors. I can see my conversion rate. And I also see my drop off rates. So on my left hand side, I can see the counts uh, that are associated with each things. On the right hand side, I can see my conversion rate and my abandon rate. When I click on any one of these numbers, whether it's on the conversion rate that somebody has gotten gotten past that step in the funnel, or the abandon rate how many people have dropped off. If I click on any one of these percentages on the right hand side, what it's going to do is going to actually show me the sessions that make up that, um, in this case, the abandon rate. So I'm looking at people that went to the ship and bill, 
right? So they're out there working on your site. They're, you know, checking their, you know, trying to get the best iPhone deal. Uh, they start putting some things in, starting filling out the form, and they dropped off there. So they were clearly interested. They started the checkout. They went to fill out the form and to sign up uh, for the the services or for re, you know for renewal new phone, and, and they left. Right. So I'm um, looking at that. When I clicked on it, I saw all the sessions that are there. Now I'm I'm, I'm going to try to answer why that's occurring. Why did I have this? Uh, you know, 19% or nearly 20% drop off between starting the checkout and just filling out the ship and bill form. Right, so you know I can just start doing you know drilling down onto this data that's sitting here. So for example, let me just say well maybe it's uh, one of these browser types. I, I noticed that Safari for me for our site is is usually it's double than what it normally is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just take a hunch and filter on that. So now I'm filtering on Safari, and what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna just arbitrarily grab one of these um, one of these sessions. And what I'm able to do here is I can either click this little uh, play button right here, or I can double click on the line. So I'm going to click on this little play button. And what that brings me to is an individual replay. And if I wanted to watch exactly what this customer did, I can play this thing back. And when I say play it back, it's actually, we can see them starting to search on men's suits. Uh, he's going loading the next page. And what this is doing, it's not really a recording, it's actually rebuilding the website right before my eyes, just the way that the user uh, interacted with the web page. In the upper left-hand corner, I can see that by the, by the, you know, even though the user's not yet logged in, I can see that I captured who the user was, how long that they spent, how many screens that they went through, you know, just some overall um, uh, environmental capabilities. Everywhere the person clicks is see this green, right? Uh, that's where they're interacting. I can see that it started to build up the uh, the cart. He's actually clicking go to cart. And then now finally we're going to the last page that this particular user Samuel was on. And you can see that uh, he's going to remove this last suit because it's a duplicate. So he clicks on remove. So what I'm able to do is quickly, you know, look through and play the whole thing. Now you wouldn't do this on everyone. I see you got a a a, a uh, error there, um, and it was related around uh, the promotion code. So it looks like he's put in. If I look on the left hand side, I can see that he put in save um, one zero. Then he put then he's putting in save space one zero, and he gets the same error message. And later on, he's going to, as we, we just let this run, he's going to put save space TEN. So to me, for my analyst mind, I'm thinking, you know what? It's probably not related to the increase in Safari traffic. It's probably that, you know, the new MacBook Pro that came out or something like that, and people are, are hitting my site or the you know, more I, uh, iPhone traffic. It's probably not related to the browser like I suspected. It's probably might be more related to um, this promo code because it appears to me now that this user was really thinks that the promo code is save 10. He's just trying it in different forms. So this is one way to do that. Normally, if I was investigating, I wouldn't go about it this way. I would instead look at this um, timeline view, um, and I would just scroll to the bottom. And just before the abandonment, I would look down here and I could see all that information as well and drill into it. So this is how I normally would do it to, instead of replaying the whole session. Um, the other thing I can actually drill into a session if you're more on the developer side is you can, uh, there's this raw data section. What Tea Leaf does is it captures every interaction and it includes the, uh, the entire response. So the full, the full HTML response that's going on in the page. And so this is much different than what you can do with any with with uh, other products. Since Tea Leaf captures everything, you don't have to do any custom tagging on the page. It's capturing everything. Any tagging that you do, uh, or trying to create an event or a complex event, Tea Leaf event, you can do it off of any of the data that was captured, uh, and we're capturing everything. And when we do that, right, we are uh, we are doing it all on the Tea Leaf side on the server, so there's no additional impact to the client at all. So now that, now that I've identified that, you know, there's something else that I want to check. I want to check something around the promo code. I'm just shifting my focus, so I'm starting to get a hunch of what's going on here. So I'm going to go back to my, um, my checkout 
uh, workspace, and I'm going to go into look at uh, promo codes. So the first thing I want to do is I've got this slide out drawer. This is how you build reports. So there's already a report here, and the name of it is uh, invalid promo codes, and I can see how many sessions put in some uh, invalid promo codes. This means that they put, some, put, it, put something in the promo code field uh, and then got some sort of a, 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 an error or warning. So what I want to do is I'm really interested in just a, a certain type of uh, promo code. So what I want to do is I want to add a breakout, and I want to add a, pro, a promo code, and see if there's anything that sticks out at me. And sure enough, I see some things that stick out, and sure enough, it's save 10. More than one person has put that in, put this same promo code in. So it might be the marketing department either didn't turn on their database. I know it's working because other promo codes are working. So uh, either the marketing uh, wasn't turned on in the marketing database or we published it wrong on Facebook or something like that. All I know it's a problem and it's been going on for the last several days. Yesterday alone it was 200, uh, you know, 2,328 users. So let me drill into that and see what's really going on. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of all this noise that's down here. So I'm going to add a filter. So let me add a filter. Oh. Too many clicking here. I want to filter and just do my save 10. Yeah, that looks much better. So there's my counts there. So now what I want to do is I want to look at what it is for the entire week. So I'm going to get rid of the day breakout. So now what I see it's a total this week alone, up until this moment at 1.33 p.m. Eastern Time, 7,360 people have had this issue. Uh, and so uh, now I want to see, well, what's that impacting our business? So I can quickly change over and look at the total cart value that was abandoned. And I can see it's about $2.5 million this week alone. So I think, you know, as an analyst, I think marketing might be interested in this. So I'm going to go ahead and schedule this report to, uh, to run, uh, you know, and show just, uh, you know, the last, you know, uh, two days including today, click next. I can schedule it for a certain period of time to run every day, click next, and go ahead and send it off to the marketing department so that they can be you know, aware of that. And I'll schedule that to run for a while until this problem gets resolved. So the next thing I might want to do is these, all, these pe all these people, uh, these uh, 7,360 different sessions, I might want to go ahead and export those. So I'm going to just click on these sessions. And then I can export this entire list for retargeting. So what I might do is to, uh, you know, a lot of them are, have already signed in. So I would then go ahead and turn around, export, and I can export export that to an Excel or uh, uh, comma separated value, and then get send that over to marketing so that we can retarget these folks. Like, hey, Wendy, come on back. We're sorry that that's, that promo code did not work. Here's another temporary promo code. We are so sorry. Please come back. So that is a way to be able to drill down into, you know, starting from my uh, funnel chart all the way down to figure out what is actually transpiring within a, an individual session, right? So I'm drilling down. I found an individual session that might have a problem. I convert. I, I confirmed that it was a uh, some sort of an issue that other people were having that same problem, and then I quantified it how much that was costing the business. So in that respect, we're able to make sure that we prioritize uh, the things that are um, that are most important to the business. You know, there might be a, a, a you know a development problem or a little quirk that's going on that you know, hey, we need to get that fixed. But here, I'm able to show that this was a you know a two point you know two point five million dollar problem. We need to shift our focus on getting this thing going right now. So that's that's uh, the, the the first thing. The other thing is uh, since I sent that report. Um, schedule report to marketing. I exported this list for retargeting. The next thing I want to do, I just created this new report just by clicking and uh, selecting different breakouts and metrics and things like that. Now what I want to do is go back and uh, what I can do is 
go to a workspace, so I'm showing three separate workspaces up here, I might want to go to a workspace that's for marketing and just add a couple of these reports um, that we just filtered down, maybe break it down by browser type. Uh, here's my save 10, my save space 10, and my save TEN. I've got those all, all, all on here in one report that's, that the marketing can sign into. I'm able to share these um, workspaces, and now they're able to monitor this, monitor this over the next few days, while I, as the analyst, can move on to the next uh, undefined uh, or unknown issue. So this is one way that, um, that T. Lee Falaja do that. There are, I'm going to just show you a couple of capabilities from a reports perspective. Um, you know, the ability to have, um, uh, you know, KPIs. Um, you know whether they're whether they're negative going over some threshold or whether they're uh, they're positive orientation changes clicks funnel reports geolocation reports uh, all of these are uh, out of the box capabilities and I can just select uh, and configure these reports as I as I showed so I'm going to come out of analytics for a second right and on the left hand side there are some capabilities that you're able to do from a user perspective it's all under optimize. So I'm going to show you two things. One of them is very new, and it's part of, uh, you know, if you've seen uh, IBM Watson in the news, it's really all about, you know, cognitive computing, uh, machine lane, uh, learning, understanding, uh, doing things in an automated way. And so there's a struggle analytics that was recently rele released that comes out of the box. So there is a way that you tell it what pages that you want to look at. So for example, the registration page, a shopping cart page, the payment page that we were talking about. And what it does is it will automatically, it will automatically um, do self-learning against these um, uh, pages and um, identify the number of visits that are having a, a struggle on the registration page, for example, 9.8% of all of my uh, visits during this time frame the 9th through the 15th uh, are having, um, you know, having a struggle and they're over the score threshold uh, at 97 percent. So they're, they're, that's why there's a warning there and I could click into that and from any of the reports you can typically go in there and actually drill into uh, see the actual sessions that are there. So here's the session, I could go play back that session, I can see the uh, um, the um, uh, the, the reason for this particular struggle uh, and, um, and and why that's occurring, All right? And I can go and actually play those. So the other uh, piece on the struggle analytics, if I look at it from a session view perspective, these are my top ten sessions that have occurred, And then I can look at uh, the individual. So based on, uh, you know, there's an error. So they had some error on the form. Uh, there was 13 of them that struggled entering in the form. And if I clicked on that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see these are the top 10 sessions that have a similar struggle to the one that we were looking at. So it does a lot of this work, investigative work for you automatically out of the box, which is pretty cool. So um, uh, I'm not going to show you every feature. Uh, but what I did want to show you is, um, uh, you know, where people are dropping off on forms. Because when you're talking telco, right, you have a lot of selections that you, you get to choose. You get to choose a plan. You get to choose, uh, you know, your, uh, uh, your, your devices. Um, uh, you get to, uh, you know, choose whether you want a, a family plan, include others in there. And so there's, there might be a lot of forms that you have to go through. So one of these, uh, what you're able to do is take a, just take, go to one of your websites, um, uh, of your form, you take a, a snapshot of it, and then you have a selection of overlays that you can uh, apply to this. One of those is called Form Analytics, and this is going to be running from a time period from uh, here we see December 2nd to December 15th. It's overlaying the data, and we see a form funnel. This is pretty unique. What I see is the deltas of what I, where I'm dropping off. When I go through this form and I start scrolling down, you'll see that it, it actually highlights on the form itself where that drop-off is. Now, from a telco perspective, right, uh, when I get to phone, I can see that, um, you know, 20,000 people uh, left putting in the phone. Well, the phone is a pretty important piece of information. But, you know, if you're just getting them to sign up, it may not uh, need to be a required field, for example. 
uh, I could probably get that on the next questionnaire, right? But uh, here, 20,000 20, people left. Why potentially did they leave? I can click either one of these numbers who continued. This would be a good one. This is a bad one. 20,000 people left. And I could go right into the session and start doing that same type of investigation that I started off when I started going through um, the, um, uh, the funnel report. And so now I can go into these sessions and start looking at those. Uh, there are a couple of uh, other, um, I clicked the wrong one here, Aurora. So you can put together, uh, you know, uh, uh, what we call a stack. A stack is a grouping of these snapshots, so of different pages. So if you are over a business accounts, rather, um, you know, uh, versus, uh, you know, uh, you know, consumer accounts, uh, you can have a group of pages that you might want to look at. So one of them that's very important is this form analytics, obviously. Another one might be, you know, maybe your landing pages and where your offers are lo being located on that page. So um, from a merchandising perspective, I might want to do something like look at, um, you know, uh, an attention map and see what's in view for which percent of the people. So if I scroll down to the bottom, even though this is a retail site, not a telco, I can see that less than 20% of the people saw this living room sale. So I know right away that if I'm really trying to push this, I might want to move this ad up a little bit further, right? Uh, in the case, this might be, uh, you know, the new Galaxy, uh, you know, uh, Note, right, that just came out. I might want to move that up. Um, the last one I want to show you is, um, uh, I'm just going to show heat maps. There's other ones. There's accessibility. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but heat maps. And one of the things we're able to do, you know, you've probably seen heat maps things, uh, you know, before and maybe with uh, other products. But what we're able to do, again, is we're able to drill down into certain sections and actually look at those uh, sessions directly. That's one. The other thing that's pretty unique here is uh, we're able to... Um, you're able to filter on any kind of dimension. So a dimension could be converted, abandoned. It could be by product type. Uh, it could be by, um, you know, uh, the, the location, the environment. These are ones out of the box, but you can add additional ones. So we add a lot of capability when, when, it, when it comes to heat maps, uh, uh, form link analysis, um, uh, comparison analytics. Comparison analytics gives you the ability to segment as well. So you can look at segments based on, you know, maybe browser type, uh, you know, and any other business. Um, uh, let me just do it by browser. Browser name, segment. And so I can select different. <laughs> And I can segment uh, based on those two different kind of browser types and look and see if it, that makes a difference, right? So you can do all sorts of, uh, um, you know, segmentation and filtering from our overlay capability. So with that, I'm going to drop back to a, a presentation because there's some more that I want to show you here. And I went through that, uh, that demonstration pretty quickly. It was a retail site. It talked a little bit about um, how that might apply to uh, telco. What we're able to do is quickly, and what we typically do for customers is come in and do, uh, you know, do a um, look at your site, uh, maybe do uh, some captures that we can do uh, remotely, uh, and uh, go through and do a more uh, detailed demonstration that specifically applies to the struggle that you're having. Tea leaf allows you to do things like drill down to identify the root cause. This is what we were showing. I started at a very high level. Uh, workspace, number one, I looked at the funnel, I drilled into the funnel, I looked and so checked on the abandonments, then I went right into the user interaction all the way down to the actual replay and I can drill right into any of the data that was captured during that session and how much do we capture? We capture it all. So it'll leave, it, it allows you to go from you know high level funnel all the way down to detail and figure out why that user was struggling. That's a very powerful capability from an investigative perspective. The other thing I did is I rolled up to isolate, quantify, and be able to take action. So I identified that, you know what, I had a hypothesis that it was not the browser, but it was actually the promo code. 
So then I went down and isolated that, right, and found out, yep, sure enough, it was uh, the save 10 is affecting a lot of people. I removed all the chaff away from that, got the number of sessions, and then went down and figured out how much, uh, how much that was impacting our company, and then took action on it, right? So retargeting uh, and so on. One of the things you can do on retargeting, I don't have to do it manually. I can actually now turn this into an automated action to automatically retarget those that have this kind of struggle. So what did, would that look like? So here on the left-hand side, I have my form. And suppose we had that form struggle that we're going through and, uh, you know, they abandoned. They abandoned because of, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe they went in. In this case, uh, they were trying to get the combined package uh, that maybe even had our, um, you know, the home phone system and maybe, um, um, uh, maybe even security, right, so uh, security monitoring. So if I went into my site, normally what people do today is if they can get the abandoned cart information that somebody went in, abandoned the cart, they don't know why they abandoned the cart, but you know, uh, we can get that today, right? You, can, you already have uh, the abandoned cart information, but if I send everybody the same message, hey Burton, come on back, right? Um, you know, come, come on back and uh, take advantage of that packaged offer that, that you have in your cart. Well, I'm not coming back if I went in there and I abandoned because the installation charge was too much, right? I have competitors in my area, so I could I could try them out just as well. So in, if that was the case, what you could do, that's what these lines represent coming out of the center where it says TD customer experience struggle detection. We have something called universal behavior exchange, which is a, uh, a real-time um, uh, system uh, integration that allows you to uh, to uh, uh, publish and subscribe to uh, customer behavior events. So the green line that's coming out and up to the right is abandoned cart after installation charge was applied. So that's one of the things without tagging the website with a custom tag, what we can do is we can, within Tea Leaf, we can go ahead and say, hey, they put something in the cart and then, um, you know, they were going through the process, but then they clicked on, you know, apply installation charge and then they left. That's a whole different kind of message than you would give for somebody that just put something in their cart and they were, they were really intending to come back later. This allows you to have a more granular um, and a better interaction with your customer. Right? They're not going to respond if the installation charge was too much and they have a competitor in their area to a, a, a standard can, me can message come back. The last one going down in red to the unclassified struggle. You'll notice that it doesn't do any retargeting at all. And so how do I get that? So what I'm going to say is the abandoned cart in yellow is a, it's, it's a, it's a bad event from a business perspective, but I can identify it as a, at least a type of an event, a good kind of event. It's an abandoned cart event where nothing else transpired. They put something in there. I know it's an abandonment, but they didn't click installation charge. They didn't click, they didn't struggle putting in a promo code. You know, it's a good, clean, abandoned cart. So I'm going to let that one go through. I've identified two other ones that were known struggles. Well, why send them a message at all if they have some kind of a struggle? Instead, what the red line is saying, take it down, fix that problem first, manually retarget them, and maybe implement a new automated type struggle if we find that the, if we've, if we've quantified that it affects a lot of people and it's um, costing the, the business money. So that's struggle-based retargeting with tea leaf. The next one would be from a customer service perspective. You know, here on the left-hand side, Burton's down there, and he clicks on, you know, contact us. He's on a he's on a device that says call that number. He calls into the call center, and what Universal Behavior Exchange would do here is it, it can push in the process struggle and pre-alert the call center so that when I got a screen pop, that uh, she could, uh, um, you know. Uh, uh, Julia here can actually see on the left-hand side my active session, scroll down there while I'm ranting and raving, and be able to have a quick resolution um, you know, without having to re me relive that same bad experience by her asking me, hey, what did you do? She knows what I did. She knows what I'm doing. If they're an unknown, if I haven't registered yet, uh, what she can do is have me do a quick little search, and she could shadow me. And that's all about reducing the amount of time uh, to resolve uh, uh, an issue from somebody calling the call center. Uh, we've proven taking 15 seconds off of service call times. Uh, great use case in customer service. 
On the right hand side, you know, once I do become known, the ability to look at my historical sessions and what they've been looking at. Oh, you've been looking at family plans. Oh, you've been looking at our bundle with our TV and our, our security uh, systems. Well, you know, we're having a special rate on that uh, this month. Can I go ahead and sign you up for that? So that's the cross-sell, upsell from a, from a customer service perspective. Um, one of the last is, you know, we, we already talked about, you know, behavioral events, but, you know, and using those to trigger to do a, um, you know, a very granular, relevant, in-context um, uh, communication or interaction with our customer to get them to come back. Well, the other thing we can do with tea leaf, we can capture the, you know, the, the detailed events that they're doing, and we can update our, um, uh, you know, up, update behaviors in, for near-term targeting and nurturing, like we would do on our IBM Marketing Cloud, as we're, uh, you know, having uh, a conversation, if you will, with uh, with your customer. And on the bottom, what we're doing is we're we're taking those behavior events for long-term visitor trending, so that we can use big data, uh, putting that into a deep and wide data source, so that we can get a really good full picture of Burton Boucher, what he says what he says he likes, and more importantly, what he actually does. And so that's what this represents. From that same universal behavior exchange, we're able to capture really um, uh, complex or simple behavior events and be able to use those to our advantage to provide the best targeting message to our customers. From a developer standpoint, um, you know, we're getting more off of the, you know, more in general, right? Uh, it empowers developers. We saw that in the timeline view in the upper left and started to look down into the individual steps on the individual pages in the center view, the timeline drill down, where I'm able to see the interactions that the user made and then finally go into replay. Uh, and then on the right hand side, I was able to look at the raw data. Both from on the top is uh, you know user interactions, so I can see that one's on a page load, uh, and the DOM capture, which is everything that uh, that creates that visualization that we see there with the laptop, right? So what that allows a developer to do is they can see exactly what has occurred in this session and what the user was trying to do to help them quickly identify. Um, and, and fix issues that they normally wouldn't see. It might not be captured in the log as an error. It might be working as as de as designed, and they just don't see something occurring. Uh, it might be browser related. Well, here the developer would be able to look and be able to see that and quickly identify that. Um, and there's a huge use case around being able to uh, prioritize your development efforts, folk find them, focus them, and get them repaired. Uh, the struggle analytics, um, you know, I showed you a little bit about that, but it's uh, machine learning, really out of the box. You just point your point it at your uh, point it at your pages. It has thresholds and alerts, uh, and it has a feedback optimization. I'll show you what that is, and you can add additional uh, struggle factors. So here is a struggle session view. I'm looking at. I showed you this, right? We looked at and saw the top sessions. Uh, we looked at the struggle event. Uh, on the, on the right-hand side, the little drop-down, to find similar struggles. So instead of me doing some of this stuff manually, it's going gonna, it's gonna to actually capture the top 10 struggles and then let me drill into the next top 10 sh struggles. So you'll notice that the struggle score in the top, it's like 99, 98, 97. They're all different scores, but when I clicked on the one that's 98, and drilled into that, there was two kinds of struggle events, the one with a count of five and one with a count of six. When I clicked on one of them, it drilled down and showed me 10 sessions that were like that kind of struggle. So it allows me to start drilling into those and then start drilling up like I did in the demonstration to quickly find that. So this is just another way to quickly identify uh, those sessions where struggle is occurring. And we're doing it with, um, you know, with uh, you know some of the same technology used with our IBM Watson. Uh, when you do struggle, we have a feedback and out analytics form, and what we're able to do there is, um, you know, uh, for looking throughout a session, we could take a survey. This will pop up after about 30 seconds, or we can just click on the link there, and it's going to ask ask us some questions about the factors. Uh, and we're able to um, to go ahead and put them in there, and and not only that, we could put it in comments. So if you know anything about Watson, Watson understands uh, the the written language. But but here, what we're really talking about is being able to improve the struggle detection with human feedback. 
so that we can really improve. Was this really, um, you know, a struggle one? We detected it that it's an anomaly from the other, from most of the other sessions that were going on. This just allows you to optimize that uh, self-learning, learning based on, um, you know, the human experience, and that's how, um, you know, IBM Watson learns best. So here's just showing the struggle factors out of the box, load time, step count, repeats, people repeating problems. You can set the weights and then from there, the, uh, and you can set the thresholds and from there the, the system learns by itself. So with that, I wanted to make sure we left some enough time for questions. So I'm going to uh, pause here and uh, open it up for questions uh, to the team. Yeah, th and thank you very much, uh, Burton. Um, that was extremely informative and some great examples uh, for sure. Um, there were a couple of questions that popped up uh, during the session. Um, <clears throat> one of them was around how uh, Tea Leaf is deployed. Um, is this a premise-based or a cloud-based solution? I think it was kind of answered during it, but maybe if you want to expand on that. Sure. Uh, what I demoed today was um, all cloud-based. Uh, so um, there is an on-prem version. There's also a, a hybrid version. So the the, the key is, um, you know, which, you know, what are your requirements? So we have uh, option, um, and um, you know, it's whatever you know, whatever is going to satisfy your uh, business use case. So you have options. Uh, SaaS has been really popular. It's really feature rich. Uh, just added this struggle to it. The great thing about the uh, the SaaS offering is, uh, you know, uh, we can add new features and features have been coming in. New features, uh, struggle without any additional cost, have been rolled in, um, and, and and those features come in every you know every month. So um, you know, a lot of people like that capability and not having to uh, manage any um, uh, servers and things like that. IBM takes care of all that workload. So great question. Great. Great, and we are at 158, so I want to make sure we, we wrap up within the time uh, that we allotted for today and be respectful of everybody's time. So uh, if there's any other questions that do come in, if there's any questions, obviously you can direct those at sales at cleargoals.com, and we'll be happy to kind of tackle those one-on-one. -on -one. Um, <clears throat> I'll wrap it up with a couple of quick thoughts. Uh, first and foremost, um, this is first in a series of sessions uh, that Clear Goals is going to be doing. Uh, around tea leaf. Um, I know as we get into January, we have a whole session just around struggle analytics that we're putting together right now, which should be pretty interesting. Um, so obviously everybody that's on this will, will happily invite you to that uh, as well. Um, in terms of you know doing business with Clear Goals, if, uh, if you're on the call and you're a telco and this is something you're considering and you've, you've never worked with Clear Goals before, um, you know, telco has been an area that we spent uh, quite a bit of time on with IBM. We've done a lot of work in that space. Uh, most of our senior executives uh, came out of the telco space in marketing tech. Um, so you know we're obviously uh, well schooled in in applying uh, IBM's technology in in the telco space. So we'd be happy to talk to you about any initiatives that you have coming up in 2017. Obviously, for Burton's part, we want to thank him for taking an hour out of his day and and doing what he does best, which is really showing how the product's applicable um, in everyday life. And uh, Burton, we thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> we will uh, go ahead and end the recording. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the call. Um, we will